Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in to what is going to be a review of the new L'Oreal Rouge Signature Matte Lip Ink Collection. They sent all the shades in this new collection to me, which is why it is in this pretty box. Here are all the shades right here. I'm going to be talking about and trying on slow-mo style each of these shades today, but I know from the comment section of those videos that a lot of people want to see more than just the swatches. They want an idea of how the collection performs, if there are any nuances within the shades, like do any of them perform better than others. So that's also what we're going to get into today in this video. Let's go ahead and dive in. So the Rouge Signature Matte Lip Ink Collection is supposed to be a super lightweight lip liquid lipstick basically. A very thin, comfortable, non-dehydrating texture that glides on the lips, feels like nothing but gives like maximum pigment like to the level of a lipstick. And I don't know about you, but when I first heard the full name of this product, the first thing that popped into my mind were the Maybelline Matte Lip Inks. And this is a formula that I've talked about here before on the channel. I absolutely love it. It is maybe my most favorite liquid lip formula out there because it is so budge proof. And I recently discovered that's not the case with all the shades, like some of the new berry shades they just launched. I literally threw away because within a couple hours of wear, they were flaking everywhere. It just didn't last. However, if you find a shade that works for you, for instance, this is the one that I keep going on about every time I talk about these, but Pioneer, this does not come off until you are ready to take it off at the end of the day. Like, I don't care what you're eating, you're drinking, what you're doing, this stays on there with you. And so I haven't really needed to go elsewhere looking for a longer lasting or better lasting liquid lipstick. However, I know a lot of people have issues with how thick this feels on the lips and with how tacky it stays feeling on the lips. That is not something that bothers me because even though it maintains a little bit of a tackier, stickier texture, I don't find things like my hair sticking to it like it would a gloss and it doesn't, it still doesn't make it transfer on anything else throughout the day. So it's just a texture that I am fine living with, but I know a lot of people aren't. And so when I heard the description of the L'Oreal matte lip inks, it sounded like they might answer a lot of those complaints that people had about the Maybelline matte lip inks. So that is definitely something that I was on the lookout for when trying these from L'Oreal. So the reality of these, or at least what my experience has been with them, is that they are absolutely super lightweight, very thin feeling on the lips. I mean, it almost feels like nothing when you apply it. It dries down. It doesn't make your lips feel tight or uncomfortable comfortable. You don't get those like fine line cracks as you move and talk throughout the day. And these don't have a tacky or sticky texture to them either. They actually have kind of a slight slip to them. So like if you rub your lips together, you have just a little bit of cushion almost it feels like. But I found for me that that texture also meant that it wasn't totally transfer proof. These do definitely show up on utensils and glasses as I would wear them throughout the day, but underneath that finish, these seriously stain the lips. And I, I definitely found that that's the case with the deeper shades, like the deeper the shade, the more intensely they stain your lips. Whereas something that is on the lighter end of the spectrum that I'll talk about as I'm going and trying on these shades, these, once they wore off, because they were so light, I really couldn't tell if they had continued continue to stain my lips. However, when I got to the deeper shades, I noticed that even though the finish was worn off, I still had lip color on my lips the next day. And that was after wiping them with, you know, like a dry cloth, using makeup remover on them, trying every which way to remove them. These will definitely stain your lips. <laughs> and you'll actually see evidence of that as I go in to try these on. I started with the lighter end of the spectrum, thank goodness. I mean, I typically do that with my swatches, but like, especially now, I'm glad I did that because the deeper I get and the more pigmented these get, the more staining you see on my lips. And so I was really concerned with how that would impact the later swatches. So I did make sure to layer up two, maybe three times just to make sure the pigment you're seeing there is entirely the color that I'm actually swatching and not the color that was left over staining my lips beforehand. But given how long these stained, if I had waited for each of the deeper shades to wear off of my lips, it would have taken me like a week and a half to swatch these because I only could have done like two or one in a day. So needless to say, the pigment is super duper long lasting, but in comparison to the Maybelline Matte Lip Ink, this looks like you are actually wearing something on your lips, like it gives full textural coverage too, if that makes sense, as opposed to the L'Oreal, where once that top layer of finish is worn off, it really looks like you have a tint to your lips, or you've, you've tinted your lips with like a thin liquid stain, as opposed to wearing like 
like a fully opaque lipstick over top, if that makes sense. That's the major difference that I see between the L'Oreal and the Maybelline. I guess there is one other major difference between the two, and that is that for me, the L'Oreal was a little bit more dehydrating, but the nice thing about the L'Oreal that I found is that once that finish is worn off, I can go in later in the day when I feel like my lips are getting drier and drier by the minute and apply like a gloss or a chapstick, and there is such minimal transfer onto the gloss or the chapstick that you still maintain that full intensity and pigment on your lips, but you're just getting a nice layer of hydration. So in that way, they're a little bit more versatile when it comes to adding moisture to your lips throughout the day because the Maybelline Matte Lip Inks would start to disappear as I added additional products over top, like that gloss or balm would break, start breaking down the formula of the Maybelline Lip Ink to where I would ultimately have to go to the bathroom and then like take it off and redo it. So even though the L'Oreal are a little bit drier, it's nice that you can add moisture a little bit easier. Okay, now let's get into the swatches. First, starting with the shade I Am Power, which is the lightest in this whole collection. This is like a soft, soft peach shade, almost like a light apricot. It's a little bit warmer leaning, and so people with neutral or even cooler undertones might not find the shade flatters them as much as others in the collection. And also I find that it was probably the streakiest formula of the bunch, and that could be due in part to how light it is. It took a while to layer up for complete opacity, and with two, almost three coats, it was totally opaque, but just applying one coat of this definitely led to some streaky payoff. Then there is I Create, which is a light, soft, dusty rose, almost kind of a light mauvey pink. And it is almost exactly my lip shade. So this is a shade that I go to whenever I just want to bring some life back to my lips. It's like almost quite literally a your lips but better shade for me. But as a result, I do find it's one of those shades for me that doesn't last quite as long as some of the more pigmented shades in this collection. Next up is the shade I Rule. And to me, this is almost like you took the shade I Create, but made it a hint darker and added a little bit more purple to it. So it is much more mauve leaning, adds a little bit more depth in there. And I think is one of those shades for me that is really versatile in how I wear it. It's just deep enough to where you can pair it with a softer eye to add some drama and it's not so deep that it's going to overpower or compete with a more dramatic looking eye. So it brings a lot of versatility to a collection, I think. Next up is Eye Explore. And this, I think, is if you took the shade Empower and took it up like five or six notches. You just added a ton of depth in there because it still has that beautiful, warm, peachy undertone, but it's deep enough to where it's almost a terracotta at this point. And I could actually see using the two shades together Together, I Explore and I Empower to create a really beautiful like 90s-esque brownie nude lip because that is just what the shade I Explore so reminds me of. That is just what the shade I Explore so reminds me of, especially after watching Lisa Eldridge just uploaded a video about like that classic 90s supermodel look. That is so what this reminds me of. Next up is the shade I Stand and this is slightly deeper and a lot more cooler, almost grazy compared to the shade I Explore. And as I go through the brown based shade shades in this collection. That's something else I want to note is that maybe it's because these shades are naturally in our skin tones that I just didn't notice these shades staining as much as I think you'll see when I start swatching the purple bases and the red bases. And then the last brown tone in this collection is the shade I Dare, and it is one of the most beautiful shades in this collection, but then again I'm clearly very much feeling a bold lip right now. This is like a deep milk chocolatey brown with a purple undertone to it. Speaking of purples, let's talk about the shade I Rebel. This is a beautiful bright purple with a hint of pink to make it sort of a fuchsia situation on your lips. And when that purple wears away, you find that it is a pretty pink stain that is left behind. And I Enjoy is the deepest purple within this collection. And beyond just being a deeper purple, it almost has a slight berry leaning to it. And I think you can see that most once that colorful top layer wears away, the stain that's left behind is something a little bit closer to more of a berry. Now moving on to the oranges and reds, first up is the shade I Achieve, and this I think is one of the most interesting shades, not just in this collection, but out there in the lip world overall. It's orange, but it's not over-the-top orange. It's almost more like a coral orange, and I think that's going to make it very flattering to a wider range of skin tones because it has, in addition to orange, maybe a mixture of more of a pink 
maybe a little bit more yellow in there. It just makes it a really interesting shade of, or like a creamsicle, not even a cream, I can't even describe it. But hopefully this watch does it justice. Next up is the shade I Don't, which was probably the most surprising shade for me in this collection. I'm not sure if it's the frosted exterior to these tubes, but when I saw this in here, especially compared to the other red shades in this collection, I thought this was going to be like a bright berry leaning red, but in reality, it is a mega bright pink on the lips, like almost a Barbie level pink. So just something to note if you're seeing this on a display in the drugstore, just know it, it might look a little red in the tube. It is very, very pink on the lips. <laughs> Actually, I think I had those backwards. I represent is the pink one. And then the one I'm about to talk about, I don't, is an orange based red, very bright, very vibrant. And once that top layer of pigment wears away, you're left with something that feels a little bit more pink on the lips. And the last shade, I Am Worth It, is a deeper berry leaning red, but still has like a hint of brickiness to it. Like it has a slight orange lean. I'm not quite sure how to describe it, but especially comparing it to that shade I Don't that's so vividly orange leaning, it just has a little bit of a deeper brown tone to it, I think, to me. And those are all the shades in this collection. I really hope this review was helpful and this slow-mo swatch session was what you were after in case you were curious how these actually look and wear on the lips. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys!